Hi, it's Trisha from Hunter's Habits, and today we're going to be rolling some flowers to make a patriotic wreath. And I want to give you some new tips about rolling flowers. We'll do that right after this. <laughs> Before we go any further today, I want to give an overdue thank you to Ron Kruger, one of my oldest patrons, and also a new patron, Dusty Ling. So now let's get started and go over to Design Space. I got my row of flowers from Flower Shop. I'm an Access member, and if you're not, you'll find out that it really saves you a bundle. If you go down here and join Cricut Access and use this code, it'll give me a short I'm sorry, a small <laughs> benefit without any cost to you. Now, as we look at Flower Shop, we see all sorts of shapes, but we're going to be rolling them, so we're going to be collecting all the ones that are in a spiral shape. I wanted it to be all different kinds of flowers, and so I want to print them all at one time, not knowing how many I needed in the beginning for the size of wreath. I just wanted to print out a page at a time of each color, but I did want them to be mixed flowers. So to do that all at one time, I need to hold down my control button and click on each one of the spiraled designs as I move up the page, keeping my control button held down. And as I click on each one, they're going to show up here at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I still like two more. One, nine, ten. Okay, and then when I say insert images, they come to the screen like this. They're all on top of each other. So I just kind of space them out just so I can see what I've got. And because I'm using, I don't want to use, well, let me put this right. I only want to use red, white, and blue. Or maybe I would want to use red, white, and gray. Or whatever colors I'm using. And I would want, so I want them to show up on the same mat. To do that, I need them all to be the same color. So what I do, if I remember correctly, and I'm not really sure because I did this several weeks ago, and I forget. But I selected them all, then I go up here to the line type and choose the color. Okay? Another way to do that that might take a little bit longer, and let me change one back just so you can see how it works, is if you go over here to sync, see the two colors? All you have to do is click on this one and drag it down to the color that you want it. Okay? Now when I saved mine, They looked a little bit like this. And when I saved them, I did them privately so that I could put them on my Patreon page for you to have already. Now, you can adjust them in any size. I ask that you save them before you start making any changes to them. 
and they're available to all of my patrons. Okay, you can go into them and customize them to any size. The size I made them, I believe, was five inches. We can look at that to make sure as soon as it comes up. If y'all recall, I deal with a very slow internet out here in the country. And that's all I'm going to say about that today. Okay, I'm going to click on... Now let's get the screen a little bit smaller. I don't want to move them around much. Okay, yeah, I just want to click on one. So I must have all of these attached. No, I have them grouped. That was so I could move them around. Okay, so if I ungroup them and then click on one, it will tell me the size up here. Five by four point whatever. Okay, so I know that I'm going to where I'm going to have at least eight on a page. Okay. So we click over here and we go to make it. You can make them any size you want, especially if you're doing a larger reef. You might want to make them six and a half, but you're not as going to, not going to get as many on the sheet as I did. Now, the first thing I do is change to a 12 by 24. 90% of my plain paper is in a 12 by 24 size because you're actually paying less for it by buying it in that. But as you notice, there's still room at the bottom of these eight, and I've got two over on another sheet. So I want to move those over to this other sheet, and I click on them individually. Scroll back up so we can see them. I click on them individually and go to the three dots and say move. Then I'm going to click on the first mat because that's where I want to move them to. And I will do the same thing to the other one. And I do them both at the same time. Continue. Now it leaves this second mat blank and you really can't tell where those other two are so you have to move them. And that's where I really need to shrink so I can see what I'm doing. I want to move them down to the bottom of the page. Don't worry, we're going to enlarge them again. Now, I already know that these were spaced proportionally. So if I move these a little bit over to the right, I'm hoping they don't overlap. But to make certain, you always want to check yourself before you cut. There they, they have plenty of room to fit on here. Okay, do you see? And you want to go ahead and cut this while you've made that change on the mats. Because if you cancel back, and I'm canceling to show you. And then go to make it again. You've gone back to the original. And you're also going back to two mats. Now it's fine if you're wanting to use the 12 by 12. I'm just trying to save you some room. Some, uh, some paper and some space. But if you don't have any, use your 12 by 12. And... Let's see if you can move any of those. I think you might. No, I don't think so. So it's going to take you three 12 by 12s. Okay, so that's why I, I highly suggest if you're getting this many on a page, go with your 12 by 24. Now, if you're like me, you like to watch them cut. So... I put in a little short video right now of them cutting. Now imagine for this small reef that I'm doing, which I believe was 11 and a half, 11.4 I picked up at the dollar store, Dollar Tree actually, for a dollar, whereas if I had bought it at Walmart or Hobby Lobby, it was going to cost me four dollars. 
unless I used a big coupon at Hobby Lobby. But let's just buy it at the dollar store. And it would have been the same size too, by the way. Then, also if you watch the video, if you notice when it first came on and I had the first part of the screen and you can see right here in the corners, that's the blue mat. You want to use a blue mat for paper. It's got a light grip and it's not going to tear your paper and your roll of flowers when you go to take it apart. I suggest using a spatula. The one that Cricut makes is very handy for lifting the flowers off. And what I do when I weed it off, I take the larger portion of the paper and then go to the smaller portion to take it all off. I don't try to remove it as one sheet at all. Another tip, look at this ruler right here. And I did that, don't look at the mess behind it, but look at that ruler. I went and bought a 36 inch yard stick, they would call it. See it's sticking out a little bit at the back. The way my table is, it would be dragging down so by the time it gets to the bottom of the mat it's pulling a little bit of weight onto the blade and occasionally it will cut incorrectly or either tear the paper so to prevent that i use that yardstick underneath my cutter when i'm using a 24 inch sheet I hope that tip helps you, and it's not, but I think it might have been now. A yardstick cost you 97 cents, maybe $1.97, but well worth not messing up the sheets of paper because I do use the larger size quite often. Okay, let's get on now to, we've watched it cut, even though I could sit here and watch it cut forever. I've got that addiction. Okay, but let's go on to the overhead and let's see what all we need to make this project. I use stray pins to put it onto the styrofoam. And I did paint my styrofoam reef. Let me give you another glimpse of that. You can see the green shining through with this light, but if you notice, that's because that's the side that was laying on the ground or on my workbench, work area. I painted it white, so when it's this way, and if you see the, the styrofoam, it's not gonna be that noticeable than a green. Okay, you can see right in here, and I could probably space these better to where you don't even see it, or notice it. Okay, then I also have a small pair of pliers. I couldn't find my jewelry pliers, so I had to go get one out of my dad's workbench. Work, uh, he's got a little portable one, and that's what that small pair came out. And I'll show you what I use those for in just a moment. I use a paintbrush, and I'm using this end, not this end. I use this end. I'm setting them up out of the way, but you know that I have them. And this is the spatula, too, that I was talking about that is really convenient for taking and putting it under your paper. And then just twist your arm, and it will lift that off without chancing tearing it. Then I'm going to use the quilling tool that comes in a paper pack, a paper, paper tool package. I'll get it out in a minute. I've been stumbling today with my words. Anyway, uh, this is the one made by Cricut and it comes in a package of tools and you get a, uh, which right now they're on sale because most of the tools are on sale, 30% off and you'll find that link below. Uh, if you use that link, I get a small commission. I appreciate it greatly. The quill has a small opening where the paper can slide through. 
and I will show you that in a moment. If you don't have that tool, you probably have some Cricut tweezers or any kind of pointed tweezers will work. These kind are great because you can click them like this and it holds them together without you having to put any pressure on it. So you're not having to grip the tweezer. at the time that the paper is in there. But I really do prefer the quilling tool if you're going to be making a lot. Okay, I mentioned the safety pins and then I'm doing it in patriotic colors. So I have the red, white, and blue, all different shapes. And a little, oh, I'm, the glue I'm using, Scotch Create Tacky Glue. It's got the new label on it. They put a new label about a year ago. And I prefer this one using this paper because you can hold it two minutes and it's going to be dry. So if you're needing to move it around a lot, don't use this. Use something that you have to hold longer. But for this, once you've done one or two, this works great. Okay, and I lay it on my side, on its side, just to make it um, easier to flow. Now, on the ones like this, that have a little bit of a petal or a rounded edge, I want that petal to curve. So, I take it and I retrain the fibers in the paper by going ahead and curling it first on the tips. Now, trust me, when you go to roll it, they're going to lay on top of each other and it'll straighten out some. So you may think that this is a waste, but when you're finished, you'll see you can reshape this paper that you've trained. I heard someone use the term the other day, training the, the paper. And uh, I haven't heard that since I used it in my classroom. When I would tell my students when they're making a fold either on origami or when we were quilling or putting a box together, whatever the whatever it was that we were doing. And I taught high school kids, so I tried to use the proper terminology. And you'll find this terminology uh, for bookmaking. If you go to the Library of Congress and print out their bookmaking instructions, you'll find that terminology in there. So it's been around for quite a while, just people don't use it. We simplify things. But anytime you bend or move the paper, once it's been pressed, whether it be a hot press or a cold press, you are retraining those fibers. You're teaching them to do something different. And it just makes it easier after you've got it rolled. You could also slightly spritz these, and I mean lightly, with water. I don't do that. I find out that this paper is light enough that you don't have to do it, but if you had a thicker cardstock, not using Cricut cardstock, and you needed it to be softer, just dampen it a little bit. Okay, now because the curl is going this way, I'm going to need to turn it this way. But immediately, can you see? Let's see, get it up here. Can you see how it's already straightening out, but it's keeping some of that curve? I don't know if I can hold my arm up here, but I'm going to try. Those little petals are going to be prettier and you don't have to go in and try to curl each one afterwards. Now notice I'm getting a little bit faster and once I get to this point right about here I go ahead and take it off of the quill. I'm holding it tight still and it's not real tight. In my first video that I made, I followed some other people's instructions to teach y'all how to make them. 
and I was putting glue on them everywhere. You don't have to do that unless you want it to stay very tight. Now on this last little brown button of paper, I bend it back and then I'm going to bend it back over the paper and notice how it covers the, the wound up area of the roll paper. If I take my thumb and hold the top and just let the flower release some, I'm hoping that's focusing for you. It doesn't look like it is to me on the screen. Okay. Look now, once I've released it back, it just about covers that area. And that's what you want it to do. Now, I bend it back. That's the way I bend it first. For a reason, so that I can put this glue on here. Maybe I should have rolled red flowers. Now, I could spread that around or I could let the paper do it in itself. You'll notice how quickly that this dries. I see it's trying to autofocus and I don't have that camera's thing on, I don't think. Let me go look. No, I don't have it on. Sorry. I would turn the autofocus off. Okay, so there you've got your little flower. Now go ahead and let it dry for a few minutes while you do a couple of others. If you wanted these curled, I like them spiky like this. So I leave them straight. But when you're curling them, because they're not curled, let me see if I can fit it in there. Because they're not curled, then it doesn't matter which way you wind them. You can wind them either way. Whichever you feel comfortable doing. And we're going to wind that up. As you can see, this doesn't take long. I used, I believe, three sheets of the 12 by 24 for each color. And I made every one of them, except for these three right here, while I was watching TV. I believe. Don't hold me to that. I might have sat at my desk and did so. Okay, I'm going to let that one unwind. Yeah, I need to turn the autofocus off. Oh, i got to remember to do that for the next one. Sorry, guys. Okay, bend it back, put some glue on there. You want this area to be as flat as possible, so if you need to mash that a little bit to try to get all of that flat. And then you just fold it out some while it's drying. And you've got a pretty little flower. Don't forget to let them unwind. That's, that's the thing that I didn't do in the first video, besides the fact I was gluing. I'm going to show you how to use these tweezers now on this last one. You basically just take it, get it started, and wind it around, just like you would your quill. When I taught my students how to do this, because I had no quilling tool, I use toothpicks. So you could even use a toothpick round the end just a little bit of the paper to get it started and hold it and turn it and twist. Once you get it started, it doesn't matter when you take it off, you can continue to roll it by hand. It doesn't have to be done tight because you're going to be letting it loose some. Um. 
Okay, and I bend that one back and bend it back toward the flower. And I let it unwind some. Can you see it unwinding? There we go. Then I go over and it's just about the right size. So I'm going to grab it. Put some glue. And there we go. You want to bend these out some. You could have rolled them however you want the flower to look. To me, it looks more like a zinnia just like this. And I'm not good at flower names anyway. A rose is a rose. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, to put the... I'm going to use one of these that I know is dry. Even though we can go back to this one, we could use it because you can see it's dry. Totally dry. Stick your pin in the center. Doesn't have to be directly in the center. Push it straight to the back. Now once you've got it in, this is where these little pliers come in handy because if you've gone through some glue, it's going to be a little bit harder to push down in there. And you want to get it past the edge of the paper so that you have a little bit more sticking through. And I've already done three of these. Actually, these three fell off while I was putting the ribbon on. So I'm going to go put them back on just so you can see how I attach them. And they just stick in there. You might want to glue them. I would recommend, actually, if I had younger grandchildren, See, where else did it come off? Oh, I don't know. Maybe right here? Right here. Found it. Found it. Found it. Found it. If I had small children, younger grandchildren in the house, I would not do these pins. Another tip that I was doing, and you probably want a smaller one than what I'm using. If you don't like the top, the head of the pin showing, you could take a screwdriver and press it down in there more. Use the flathead screwdriver and just press it down. I don't like them showing. So I'm sure I'll go back through several times and press them down in there. Well, this one's really showing. If you want to make sure they don't fall off, put some glue on the star foam before you put the pin down in there. Okay, I am using a scarf that I got at the dollar store. Isn't that pretty? I was going to get ribbon at Hobby Lobby and probably pay three or four dollars for it and I saw these scarves and I said that would make a good uh, ribbon for that reef. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be hanging this on the door. I saw it wrapped it around a couple of times and I'm just going to tie it in a knot. Let's see. We want to go this way. Because that one's longer. And then just put a floppy bow. If you want the bow to be a little bit stiffer, then you would need to get the ribbon with the wire. But I'm not real particular about that because in my mind when I first started creating this, I saw it in the stores first, okay? You see them everywhere and you say, okay, I can go home and make that. Isn't that what we say? Trust me.
for what they were charging, I made this for much less. You know the joke where you go make a $10, you spend $120 to make a $10 item. Well, crafters, we don't do that, do we? Some of us do. I mean, some of us may, depending on the project. But most of us don't. Now, who is calling me right now? Nobody I need to talk to. Okay, here's our bow. Nothing fancy. And this might end up, like I said, I may use it in a, as a table center and put some fireworks coming out from there. Uh, of course, made out of paper. And uh, put it on the red table runner that I have. Never know. I might make some rosettes. If I do that from the free cut Fridays that we have right now, I've got to get some more red, white, and blue paper. So i got to go to Cricut and order. I will say thank you and see you later. Don't forget to check out Patreon.com Huntress Habits. I appreciate you and remember in everything in life, Detours still lead to your destiny. Have a great day.